In light of an extremely eventful year, many challenges that it's presented to our community, I thought it would be useful to spend uh, today's Eid Khutbah uh, looking at the qualities of the quintessential believer's character, akhlaq al mu'minin, as defined by our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and our Master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In order for us to respond appropriately, in certain to certain things, crises or events, to respond in a way that inshallah will secure us the tawfiq or the providence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First of all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, speaking directly to our master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa innaka la'ala khulukin azim. And if the particle ala is prior to an abstract noun, this denotes tamakkun or mastery. Verily, verily, you have mastered magnificent character. In a hadith that Imam Ahmad relates, our master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Innama bu'ithu li utamima makarim al I was only sent to perfect noble ethics and character. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, al bibu husnu al-khuluq. Righteousness is good character. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna min ahabbikum ilayya, wa aqrabikum minni majlisan yawman qiyamati, ahasinukum akhlaqan. He said, Indeed, the most beloved of you to me and the closest of you to me on the day of judgment is the one who has the best character. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ma shay'un athqalu fi mizan al-mu'min yawm al-qiyamati min khuluq al-hasan. He said, peace and blessings of God be upon him. There is nothing weightier on the scale of a believer on the day of judgment than good character. However, when we talk about good character, we're not talking about good character in lieu of the performance of righteous action. We do not imagine an absolute bifurcation between personal khuluq and a'mal. These two things are not mutually exclusive. In other words, someone who might say, I don't pray, and I don't fast, I don't do zakah, but I have good character. Such a person, person is in a state of gurur or delusion. Righteous action is a function of good character. The Prophet Sallallahu ibadat was a byproduct of his good character. Just one hadith will suffice, inshaAllah. And Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, qal kana Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam hatta tadima qadamah. The Prophet وسلم, he used to pray until his feet would swell. له, then it was said to him, And it was said to him, Do you do this? And it has been revealed to you that your future and past transgressions have been uh, forgiven. In a transgression, a dhamm of a Prophet is very different than arson. The thumb of a prophet is leaving an act of great virtue for an act of lesser virtue. There is no question of deliberate disobedience with the Prophet Sallallahu Listen to his re response Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Asala akunu abdan shakura Shall I not be a grateful servant? So his prolonged prayer was a reflection of his character virtue of shukur. In other words, righteous action is a natural byproduct of personal khuluq. If you love someone, you will demonstrate your love to them. Imam Hassan asked his brother, Imam al Hussein, these are the grandchildren of the Prophet He asked his father, Sayyidina Ali, about the character of the Prophet It's a long hadith, I'll give you some highlights. We're short on time. You'll find the uh, narration in the Shema'i of Imam al tirmidhi and his chapter, Ba'u Ma Ja'afi, so what exactly is this khuluq azim that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran? So Sayyidina Ali, he said, كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ دَائِمَ الْبِشْرِ The Prophet وسلم, was always cheerful, jovial, affable, سَهْلُ الْخُلُقِ Easy going, imperturbable, لَيْنَ الْجَانِمْ Mild manner, gentle, gentle, he was not harsh or hard-hearted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
in the Quran. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَلَهُ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضَّنْ خَلِيدَ الْقَلْبِ مَنْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِهِ It is part of the incredible mercy, so much emphasis in the Arabic. It is part of the incredible mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you have lean, you have gentleness. If you were harsh or hard-hearted, people would have fled from you. Sayyidina Ali continues, وَلَا سَخَّابٍ وَلَا فَحَّاشٍ وَلَا عَيَّابٍ He was not loud, he was not vulgar or obscene. He did not point out the faults of people, right? We talked about this a few journals ago. It turns out Dr. Jackson uses gotcha Islam. You're walking down the street, you see a Muslim smoking a cigarette. Hey, brother, gotcha! There's something pathological in some people. They need to expose others. It makes them feel big or something. But taraka nafsan in thalath. Sayyidina Ali says, the Prophet left three things. Al-mira'i wa iqtar wa ma la ya'nihi. That he would leave argumentation. He would leave excessive talking. Man sumata najah, he said. Whoever is silent saves himself. There's a hadith uh, attributed to Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, our master Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, who said nine-tenths of ibadah is silence. Ninety percent of worship is silence. And that's Hawara, you asked him, what's the other ten percent? The other tenth. He said, fleeing from shuhra, fleeing from fame, fleeing from reputation, fleeing from finding a place in the hearts of the human beings. But finding a place with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he left three things, argumentation, excessive talking, and, and what was not his business. Min husni islam il mar'i tarquhu ma la ya'nihi. From the beauty of a person's Islam is that he leaves that which does not concern him. He continues, كَانَ لَا يَذُمُّ أَحَدًا وَلَا يَعِيبُهُ وَلَا يَتُلُبُ عَوْرَتَهُ That the Prophet ﷺ, he did not insult or disgrace anyone. He did not seek the private affairs of the people, of anyone. وَلَا يَتَكَلَّمُ إِلَّا فِي مَا رَجَى ثَوَابًا And he did not speak unless there was hope and some reward in what he was saying. Our mother Aisha, she said about her husband, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I always say this, almost every khutbah, no one knows the man better than the wife. لَمْ يَكُنُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَاحِشًا وَلَا مُتَفَاحِشًا The Prophet وسلم, was never vulgar or crude or obscene. He never dropped what we would call a four-letter word, an F-bomb, right? وَلَا سَخَّابًا فِي الْأَسْوَاقِ He wouldn't even raise his voice in the marketplace. وَلَا يَجْزِي بِالسَّيَّةِ سَيَّةِ He would not return an evil for an evil. وَلَكِمْ يَعْفُوا وَيَسْفَحُوا But he وسلم, would forgive and overlook. His khuluq is described in the books of Ahl al-Kitab, in the Hebrew Bible, in the Tanakh. This was a dalil of his nabuwa when Abdullah ibn Salam, a rabbi in Medina al-Manawara, when he saw the Prophet وسلم, coming, he said, Araftu anhu wajhahu laysa bi wajhi kata. Araftu means he recognized, recognition, that the khalq, the khalq, the physical attributes of the Prophet وسلم, are mentioned in the books of Ahl al-Kitab. We don't have enough time to go into that. But he says he recognized the Prophet's face. It wasn't the face of a liar. But also his khuluq in the Tanakh, Isaiah 42, Hen abdi if mahbu bi khiriratsa nafshi in the Hebrew, behold my abd, my servant. This is the word in Hebrew. This is the primary title of the Prophet I will put my ruh upon him, it says, my spirit upon him. Mishpat mi goyim yotsi. He will bring mishpat. Mishpat in Hebrew means divine law, means religion, means uh, judgment, deen. Mi goyim, to the Gentiles, right? To the Gentiles, to the ummiyin. He is Nabi al ummi. And then it says, walo yashmi'a bi khutfolo. He will not even raise his voice in the marketplace. This is exactly how our mother Aisha described him. There are people in Medina who read these descriptions in the Hebrew Bible and they made shahada based on his khuluq. They didn't see a miracle, just on his character. So what are some of the virtuous character traits we mentioned? Cheerfulness, easygoingness, gentleness, taciturnity, meaning generally untalkative, inoffensiveness, decency, agreeability, Unintrusiveness, quietude, forgiveness. How is the believer described in the Quran? Look at Surah Al-Hujurah, 
The entire surah is about social etiquette. And adab with the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayuha al-ladheena amanu, la tuqaddimu bayna yadihi illahi wa rasulihi, wa taqu Allah, inna Allah sallimu alim. And I truly believe that if people applied this ayah, our condition would vastly improve. Just this one ayah. Literally it says, O you who believe, do not advance yourselves before Allah and His Messenger. Do not step in front of Allah and His Messenger. <clears throat> what does that mean? Do not step in front of Allah and His Messenger? The Urnama say that the believer does not prioritize his own ideas, his own principles, his own opinions over, uh, over that of Allah and His Messenger. We live in an age where many Muslims, unfortunately, under the guise of social justice or activism, are embracing certain values and movements that are at the very least very difficult to justify theologically and morally. And rather than interrogating their own positions in light of what Allah and His Messenger has said, they interrogate Allah and His Messenger in light of their own positions. Instead of instead of clutch unto the Habalullah, the Quran according to the Tafsir. Like you're drowning. I'tisam means to clutch onto a rope as if you're drowning in the ocean. They have i'tisam of their ahwa and they religiously sanction their desires. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu, ati'u Allah wa ati'u Rasul wa ulil amri minkum. Oh, you who believe, obey Allah and obey the Messenger. This is fi'l amr. This is an inheritance. Who is Ulil Amri Minkum? Ibn Abbas said civil and scholastic authorities. People say, oh, we don't have a clergy in Islam. It's not exactly true. The ulama, the scholarly community, the scholastic community, are heirs of the prophets according to the Prophet. So civil and scholastic authorities, not celebrity speakers, not stand up comics, not rhetoricians. Not pontificators, not popular activists, not sophistry. And if you differ about anything, not if you differ about religion or prayer or fasting, if you uh, disagree about anything, then refer it to Allah and His Messenger. Referring it to Allah means Kitab Allah. To the Quran, to the Messenger means the agreed upon prophetic ethos, the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Alaykum He said, "I exhort you to follow my Sunnah, my normative practice." Harisun alaykum. He cares about us more than any human being. This is why he's telling us this. I exhort you to follow my sunnah and the sunnah, sunnah of the rightly guided caliphs. Hold on tight and bite into it with your molars. This is the analogy he's using. When the Sahaba used to hear something like Inni Bariyun from the Prophet Sallallahu they used to shake and quake. He is not from me who turns away from my sunnah. Our beloved teacher, Shaykh Hamza, was here, is absolutely correct. This is a time of hayra, of widespread bewilderment, mass confusion. There are some who call themselves progressive, who say the ulama are obsolete. They're antiquated. They're out of touch. Right? No, the ulama are, could not be more relevant now than ever. But we need to know the times that we're living in. There's a hadith in Sahih Muslim. For the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, He says, There come a time, towards the end of time, where there's going to be flagrant habitual liars, imposters, dajjalun, who will make statements that neither you nor your ancestors have ever heard. In other words, he's going to say things that are absolutely irreconcilable with our faith tradition, that no Muslim has ever heard, yet they'll justify themselves religiously. Beware of them. Beware of them. And this is happening now with this postmodern 
neo-Marxist social constructionism, social constructionism that has invaded college campuses around the country, which espouses that every traditional system is inherently oppressive, tyrannical, and a function of some evil patriarchy, and that these evil ulama, these people want to maintain this oppressive system. In fact, the entire Abrahamic tradition needs to go, and that there's no real truth, no normative tradition, no orthodoxy, all narrations, all narratives are valid. So our tradition is under attack. This is an assault on the Midla of Ibrahim, Ali Bissalam. But our battle isn't physical, it's intellectual, it's ideological, it's spiritual. To quote a man who lived about 2,000 years ago, our battle is not with flesh and blood, but with principalities of darkness. The foundation of the Abrahamic tradition is mahabba of Allah and mahabba of human beings. Imam Fakhr ibn al-Razi, he said, Al-Islam ibadatun lil khaliq wa rahmatun lil khaliq. Islam in a nutshell is worship of the Creator and compassion and love to its creation. لا تدخل الجنة حتى تؤمنوا ولا تؤمنوا حتى تحبوا حديث of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم Most Muslims don't know this hadith. You will not enter paradise until you truly believe. And you will not truly believe until you love one another. Getting rid of God, getting rid of revelation, the human life loses its sacredness. We become soulless animals. Morality becomes compromised. It becomes relative. Right? The Prophet Dawood, alayhi salam, he wrote in the Zabur, Psalm 111, verse 10, he said, Reishif Chokma Yir'ath Adunai. We translate that into Arabic, Hidayatul Hikma Taqbar Rab. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. What is the role of the ulama during this troublesome time? I've mentioned this briefly, I'm almost out of time. It's an amazing hadith of Bayhaqi. The Prophet said, Yahmilu had al ilm min kudi khalfan urdulu yanfuna anhu tahrif al ghalim wan tihal al muktilin wa ta'wil al jahilin. This sacred knowledge will be borne by reliable authorities of each successive generation. They will remove from it alterations of those guilty of exaggeration, the plagiarism of the corrupt in the interpretations of the ignorant. لا يزال بأمتي أمة قائمة بأمرillah. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, a remnant of the ulama will always be present to preserve the religious. However, the decentralization of the ulama in the eyes of the masses is leading to a spiritual, moral, and intellectual quagmire. Back to Surah Hujrah. Almost done. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا ترفعوا أسواتكم فوق صوت النبي. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said at the beginning of this ayah, O oh, you who believe, and when Ibn, Ab Ibn Abbas said, when you as a believer hear, Ya ayyuha ladina amanu, listen very, very closely. Do not raise your voice over the voice of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Think literally and figuratively. Literally, when you hear a hadith, be quiet. Don't speak. Don't speak figuratively. Prioritize his voice over your voice. Voice as it were. Or what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and tashbaba a'malukum, antum la tashbaru. Or else your deeds will be spoiled and lost and you won't even know. You think about it. your salawat, your siyam, your zikr, your zakat, all of these things will be lost, spoiled, thwarted if we don't give priority to the voice of the Prophet over our own voice. When this ayah was revealed, Abu Bakr al Siddiq only whispered to the Prophet. <laughs> There was another companion, Thabit ibn Shammas, that he had a loud voice. He stopped coming to the masjid. He said, my voice is so loud I can't come to the mosque anymore. This is how serious they took. Breaching Adam with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when the Salaf would just hear his name, they would start weeping uncontrollably. Ayyub as sakhtiyani He uh, tested Malik ibn Anas. He wanted to see if he could take him as a student. So he mentioned the name of the Prophet Sallallahu to Malik ibn Anas. He saw Malik's face, Imam Malik ibn Anas. His face turned pale, he started trembling. He said, this is a good student. And then Imam Malik, he said, you know, Ayyub was my teacher. It was only after I saw signs of love of the Prophet Sallallahu in his face that I actually started writing down some of the things that he said. 
ان الذين يردون اصواتكم عند رسول الله اولئك الذين امتحن لهم قلوبهم بالتقوى لهم مغفره واجر عظيم those who lower their voice in the presence of the messenger of Allah those who pri- prioritize his voice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested their hearts for taqwa for them is forgiveness and a great reward so more virtuous character traits that we gather from this deference towards Allah and his messenger and ikram towards the ulama reverence towards the prophetic tradition and discernment in times of deception and confusion aqulu qawli hadha Last thing I want to mention very quickly, it's important. The Prophet sallam, he said, Laysa al-Mu'min, the quintessential believer, is not Laysa al-Mu'min, the ta'ani, wala bil la'ani, wala al-fahishi, wala al-badi. The quintessential believer is not abusive, does not curse people, is not vulgar, and is not obscene. So my sincere advice to you, and this is in light of recent events, not any one event in particular. If someone tries to pick an argument or fight with you, you just don't engage with them, right? If someone has a, you know, an earnest question, use your wisdom. If someone's clearly trying to argue, pick a fight, فَاسْتَعَنْهُمْ أَقُلْ salam. Turn away from them, say salam, or just leave. وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانَ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا these servants of the infinitely compassionate, they walk, they tread lightly upon the earth. And when the ignorant speak to them, قَالُوا salam, They say peace. People are unstable. People are easily triggered. The people have PTSD, whatever it's called. The people have been in war, right? There was a sister who, in a hijab, driving her car, and she had kids in the car, and somebody cut her off and she flipped them the bird. If you get what that means, you can ask people later. <laughs> And this guy started following her for miles. Scared her half to death. She's calling the police. She almost got in a car accident. Don't antagonize people. afwa. The Quran says, Khudil afwa. Seize pardon. Seize it. Khudil afwa. Wa'amun bil uf. Wa'arid al jahili. Seize pardon. Order towards the good and turn away from the ignorant. It's not worth it. We have to train ourselves to have ihtimal, self restraint and resignation in the face of pains and weakness, uh, pains and injuries. But this is not a weakness. The Prophet said, the shadeed is not the man who can throw the other man down. إِنَّمَا الشَّدِيدُ أَلَّذِي يَمْلِكُ نَفْسَ عِنْدَ الْغَضَبِ أو كَمَا قَالَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامِ The shadeed is the one who controls his anger, uh, controls himself when he's angry. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a tawfiq to implement what was said. اللهم اهدنا فيمن هديت وعافنا فيمن عافيت وتولنا فيمن توليت وبارك لنا فيما اعطيت وقنا الشر ما قضيت اللهم انا نسالك بنور وجهك الكريم في حق عليك حسن الخاتمه عند الممات لنا ولاحبابنا ولجميع المسلمين يا ارحم الراحمين ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمه انك انت الوهاب ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنه وفي الاخره حسن وقنا على النار لا اله الا انت سبحانك ان كنا من الظالمين لا اله الا انت سبحانك ان كنا من الظالمين لا اله الا انت سبحانك ان كنا من الظالمين ربنا ظلمنا انفسنا وان لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا من كنا من الخاسرين يا مقلب القلوب الابصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب الابصار ثبت قلوبنا على طاعتك وصلى الله سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين امين 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 عيدكم مبارك